In this episode, we are going to talk about the current divider rule. So current divider rule, we are going to apply this in parallel circuits. So the analysis for current divider is going to be a parallel circuit. We are also going to use it to find currents in resistors. And this episode is also going to focus on two resistors. Resistors. So this current divider rule is applied in parallel circuits. And we are going to use it to find current passing through a particular resistor. And we are only going to consider two resistors for a particular circuit. So let's have our circuits in a parallel circuit form. So I have this and I'm going to have two resistors. This way as my R1 and R2. Please pay attention to the analysis. So I have my current IT moving. We know that at this junction it is going to split into I1 and I2. So now the current divider rule is going to help us to know the value of the current of I1. If IT is say 50 amperes, how many of it is it going to be 20 amperes in R1? Is it going to be 40 in R2? So the current divider rule is going to help us to find the value of I1 in resistor 1. And it is also going to help us find the value of I2 in resistor 2. That's what we term as the current divider rule. And it is applied here in this episode for two resistors. So let's state the formula. If we have two resistors in parallel circuit, the current I1 passing through the resistor 1 is going to be now R2 on R1 plus R2 multiplying IT. And The current I2 passing through resistor 2 is going to be R1 on R1 plus R2 multiplying IT. This is quite confusing. Check this. The current I1 passing through resistor 1. The formula is going to be R2. Pay attention. Mostly students confuse this by using R1 here. This is supposed to be R2, although we want current in resistor 1. But here we are going to say R2 on R1 plus R2 multiply the total current. When we come to current in resistor 2, instead of saying R2 over that, it is also going to be R1 on R1 plus R2 multiplying the total current. This formula can be proved as to why we have it that way. So for two resistors always in parallel form, this formula is true to find the various currents in each of the resistors. So let's prove why we have this. Now, for parallel circuits, we know that Let's call this V1 as the voltage across resistor 1 and V2. We have our VT. We know that our VT is equal to V1 and that is equal to V2. That is established. Are we okay? Now from Ohm's law, we know that our VT is also equal to the total current multiplying the total resistance. Is that true? Yes. Now, from here, and we also know, since there are two resistors, our current IT is going to give us I1 plus I2. 
true is that true so we are interested in finding i1 if we are interested in finding i1 then we are going to say i1 is equal to v1 on r1 this is also true because from the ohm's law v is equal to what i r now we also know that v1 is equal to vt so we can replace it with that so v1 that is going to be it and rt on r1 where rt is so where rt is the total resistance now when we have two resistors how do we find the total resistance that is from the formula we are going to have one on rt is equal to one on r1 plus one on r2 is that correct so when you simplify this your rt is going to give you r1 r2 on we are going to have r1 plus r2 for two resistors this is also true so now we are coming back to the formula for i1 this formula two i1 is going to be we have rt and the whole of rt is r1 r2 everything on r1 plus r2 multiplying it so times it everything divided by r1 this way so this is just mathematics we can see that i1 is equal to now this will be r1 r2 on r1 plus r2 multiplying it or multiplying because this division is dividing everything and that is going to be times one on r1 this is mathematics so this r1 will cancel this r1 leaving i1 to be r2 on r1 plus r2 multiplying i t so this is where we got the formula to find for i1 it is the same for finding i2 also you are going to prove it and get the same formula so this is very simple for the current divider approach you can also do that for three resistors but here we are focusing on two resistors in the next episode we will talk about three resistors so this is true let's use this to work some examples and see how best we can apply this rule example one find i1 and i2 if it is 14 amperes so here we have a diagram where we know that our total current from the source is 14 amperes we are to find the current i1 which is in the first resistor and find the current in i2 which is resistor 2 so straight away we are going to have our parameters we know that it is equal to 14 and our first resistor r1 which is for the i1 is 25 ohms and r2 for i2 which is also 45 ohms and here we are good to use the current divider rule because we have two resistors in parallel so the current divider rule for i1 is always for two resistors that is going to be r2 on r1 plus r2 multiplying the total current and that for i2 is also going to be r1 on r1 plus r2 multiplying the total current so for i1 the 
the value for the R2, the second resistor is 45. So that is 45 on 25 plus 45, multiplying the total current, which is 14 amperes. And everything here is going to give us I1 to be 9 amperes. Are we okay? And I2 is also going to be R1, which is 25 on 25 plus 45, multiplying 14 amperes. And that is going to give us 5 amperes. Now, after getting I1, you can also use this relation. We know that IT is going to be I1 plus I2. You know the value for I1 and IT. So our I2 was going to be IT, which is 14 minus I1, 9. And that is going to give us 5 amperes. So if you are not restricted to use the current divider rule, you can also use this relation to get your answer. So this is just a simple method and a simple question to use the current divider rule. Let's check out, for example, 2 and also work with it. Example 2. In the figure below, if IT, which is the total current, is 20 amperes, find RT, total resistance, VT, total voltage, so this is our VT, and find I1 using Ohm's law. Again, find I1 using current divider rule. So you can see two different approaches. We are going to find I1 using Ohm's law, I1 using current divider rule. So we are restricted over here. Let's try to solve this very simple. So here we are going to start with our parameters given. So let me change some of the parameters. I will call this I1 and I will call this I2. It is not always that the first branch is I1 and the second is I2. So you have to pay attention. So for the 32 ohm, I1 is passing through it. And for the 18 ohms, I2 is passing through it. So let's write down our... So here we have IT as 20 amperes. We have to find I1 is unknown. Even I2 is also unknown. Our resistor 1, R1, is now 32 ohms. Because the I1 is passing through it, we consider that one as our resistor 1. Now, R2 would take the current I2, which is also 18 ohms. Once you interchange these parameters, it is going to affect your solution. Because I1 is passing through the resistor 32 ohms, I am going to call it resistor 1. And because I2 is passing through the 18, I am calling it resistor 2. So straight away, let's start with the total resistance. So here we can use the formula 1 on RT is equal to 1 on R1 plus R2. So 1 on RT will be equal to 1 on our R1, which is 32, plus 1 on R2, which is 18. And with this, you are going to get your RT. When you find the inverse, your answer is going to be 11.52 ohm. So this is the total resistance in the circuit. The B, we have to find VT. From Ohm's law, our VT is going to be IT, RT. So we have all these parameters. Our IT is now 20 amperes multiplying RT, total resistance 1, 11.52. So the total voltage in this circuit is going to be 230.4 volts. Now our main focus, we have to find I1 using Ohm's law, using Ohm's law. Now 
we know that I1 should be equal to V1 on R1, right? Yes, on R1. And we also know that VT for parallel circuit is equal to V1 is equal to V2. And we know the value of VT. So straight away, our I1 is going to be V1, which is also equal to VT 230.4 on resistor 1. That is 32. And this is going to give us 7.2 ohms. Is that right? Now, the D part, we are to solve it using current divider rule. We have two resistors. We want I1. And we know that the rule is going to be R2 on R1 plus R2 multiplying the total current. And this is the same as R2 from this R2 is 18 on R1, which is 32 plus 18 multiplying the total current, which is 20. And when you punch this, your I1 is also going to give you 7.2 amperes. So we are getting the same answer but different approach. Pay attention to the question. If it is restricting you to use the current divider rule, know how to go by it. So with this, if I1 is 7.2, what would be I2? So I2, because we know that, pay attention here, IT is now equal to I1 plus I2. So I2 is going to be IT minus I1. That is going to be 20 minus 7.2 and that is going to be your answer for i2 you can also still use the current divider rule such that your i2 will be r1 on r1 plus r2 multiplying i t they will all give you the same solution check out for that please subscribe to the channel drop your comments and share the video thank you for your time